Hi Jason, how are you? <laughs> hey, bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. I know, I say it poorly. Uh, I have Ontario French. Ontario French. Which isn't even part of the French part of the country. Okay. So my bonjour is extra funny because it's so mispronounced. I have a... So say bonjour, go ahead. Now I'm over focusing now, so now it's but it's like bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Yeah, I go bonjour, bonjour. Yeah, it's bonjour. But do you have any? Uh, do you speak French Canadian at all, or no? No. That was looked at as like <sighs> trying to learn something for what the collective would think is a useless piece of education because it was, Quebec was, especially I think in the 80s and 90s, there was a part where they wanted to separate from the country. Mm -hmm. And there's always been a, it's usually based in sports though, hockey, the Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the language, the sports rivalries. So there was no... It was, if you said French words, they'd be like, they'd be in your face. So you grew up where? Uh, Toronto or, I mean, you're always going to Toronto and perform. That's the hub. But uh, I grew up an hour from Toronto, a place called Hamilton. Mm -hmm. It's about, um, probably about, probably close to 600,000 people now. Steel town. Um, Very rough. Uh, It's weird. Because I, for the first time since I left when I was 21, um, during the COVID, I'd gone back to Canada uh, to kind of figure out what was going to might be my future, because LA had collapsed to a degree where the quality of life wasn't the weather wasn't good enough reason to stay in the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. So um, the six, eight months that I was in my hometown living there for the first time since I was 21, it gave me a chance to kind of revisit my hometown and uh, found it to be quite nice. But then the people come out of their Mm. homes and it becomes a different kind of animal. So when you say the people, is it your friends, your home, you know, the friends you grew up with? Terrorists. Terrorists? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Terrorists. (laughs) So, you're saying Chaos. That you're traumatized by these terrorist uh, friends? Oh, uh, I was a terrorist. Oh, you were part. I was part <laughs> of the terrorism. Yeah, I terrorized the city. I was in yeah. more of the, um, you know, especially when we'd seen Jackass, uh, skyrocket to, to its celebrity. We were kind of mm-hmm. like that's what all the kids did across North America. Bum fights too. Remember uh, that show? Oh, do I? <laughs> Did you see the guy on Dr. Phil? Mm-mm. Oh, you never oh, seen yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, I and saw he that He shaved one. his head yeah, yeah. like Dr. Phil's and wore the suit, <laughs> and he got kicked off the show. <laughs> yeah. That guy's a legend. But Get him off fights. the show. Uh, I can't do his accent. Yeah. Did you? Uh-uh. Okay. I could sit and mirror it a little bit, but... Um, yeah. Did you, did you Have you ever seen a Bum Fights episode? Yeah. Where they're pulling I mean, out I, their teeth? The thing is that I... Like, I grew up on it as well. Yeah. No, it was an early it was a big internet thing. trend for sure. Yeah. Um, long before Two Girls, One Cup. <laughs> yeah, long before. Yeah. And that was the thing, though. I don't know. See, it's all about production, right? Those girls eating the shit is one thing. That's been on the internet in films for the last, since they made the first movie, somebody's like, hey, can I piss in your mouth? We'll film this. Mm-hmm. Um, That's sensationalism. When I think They put a song behind it, and it's got a good melody to it. It, it, it was a contradiction of some two beautiful women mm. ingesting each other's feces while a children's uh, song is playing in the background. Yeah, it was shocking. Not for this girl. <laughs> no. So, but going back to that hometown, Hamilton, mm. right? Yeah. Okay. You know we have a Hamilton pool in Austin? Is it? Yeah. It's a very uh, famous spot. Actually, uh, now you have to reserve to go there. But you're smiling like it's like where gay men go to 
pound each other out at night. Perhaps I haven't checked. But, yeah, uh, you know, maybe that's why you need a reservation. I think anywhere classy. in the woods in the city, someone's gonna have to give an angry blowjob or something. <laughs> so, um, so you go back. You were horrified about how, what happened in L.A. through COVID. Well, I knew that the Indian family that was running the Seven Eleven at uh, Hollywood and Highland, mm-hmm. um, when they boarded up their windows, that was a good sign. I don't know what they're, where they came from or if they grew up in Los Angeles, but they were the only business open for like mm. 10 square miles. And when they boarded up their windows, I was like, because they had homeless people, crazy people in there on the minute, every minute. Every time I went in there 24-7, you know that corner, Hollywood and Highland. Yeah, okay. Always crazy homeless people, especially uh, up Highland a little more. That's actually the Seven Eleven I would go to. Yeah, I live. Uh, I live right around. Not too far from the One Hundred One Freeway. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit further. Yeah, uh, yeah. And as you move closer to the freeway, you know how mm-hmm. fucked up it starts to get. Yeah. And any Los Angeles freeway, anything that has a canopy from from the sunlight, mm-hmm. there's homeless people living under, and they're fucking. They're smoking. And their shit catches on fire and burns up the whole side of the highway. <laughs> Fucking guy home. Ah! Yeah, Roller. I mean, I remember I was there in 2013 and it wasn't that bad. It was still pretty bad or people were able to fake um, being successful. Yeah. You know, and hide in their shared rooms. and. Yeah, it was like New York. Yeah. But you're saying that it really radically transformed since then. Especially there was no police. Time. There was no... It was lawless. Uh-huh. People, there was moving trucks. All one... And one morning I woke up. There were some announcements made and uh, around April or something like that. And um, I think it was the lock-in, mm-hmm. the first one. And then they said it was only going to be a short time. And they kept extending it, extending it. And then people were like, fuck it. I'm going to move back in with my parents mm. and wait this out with family. And the moving trucks were all down the streets. You could literally see... Moving the, trucks. And people moving out of their places, uh, renting U-Hauls. Leave the key in the door and just going. Yeah. Mm. The whole thing. Anything yeah. that they could get in that vehicle within the hour, it was gone. Like but I, you were one of them, right? You went back to Canada. No? I did. I sat and I'm like, I got two more months of my lease. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. I'm going to go visit my mother. So I'll put all my shit in storage. I had a friend, fortunately, from Canada that uh, he's lived it. Fuck. And I call him all the time. And I'm like, how are you guys doing? And she goes, well, my wife's... Because uh, they were down by Melrose mm-hmm. and um, uh, Fairfax, I want to say, area. Out by the Hollywood Improv. And my friend tells me his wife is handing out bottles of water and granola bars to the rioters. To the riot? Okay. Yeah. It's like a... Then keep going, do what you got to do, keep you know, come moving, kind of thing. So there, that that was another approach, and that that was right in the middle of it. That's a terrifying with babies and shit. I don't know, but so you made the move to Canada. Uh, I made a temporary stop. I knew okay. I knew that I would have to stay. Uh, I had I wanted to honor the agreement that I had with the U.S. government. Rain, sleet, snow, ice, whatever, like the postman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was doing that. Now, I had friends of mine that stayed out of the country on the same kind of paperwork that I had for a year and a half and drove back over the border, no problem. Me, me I didn't want to even have a conversation about it. So I made sure that I had six months of planning and where I was going to go in that time. Uh, I don't know if Jamie got COVID or something or anyway, he got sick and Red Band was asked to come in and do the Kanye West episode. And um, at that time, he decided to kind of look around and see what the city was like. He's always like he'd been here a bunch of times. And um, I talked to him the next day and he said, I bought a house. Mm. And I go, I'll see you in a couple of months. That's all I needed was friends of mine that, I'd built relationships with in LA that were moving into a place that I'd rather be mm-hmm. is this city is one of my all time favorite cities, uh, top 10 in the world. Austin. Austin. 
for you sure. Had, have you been to Austin before? I literally got off the plane. I hadn't yeah. been in the state of Texas before. I went from the airport to my house. Fortunately, where I lived at that time, I, everything just checked the boxes. I watched hundreds of hours of drone videos, watching, looking at the city. Yeah, just I wanted to see what the landscape was like. Yeah, what was my life going to function? What resources? How far was it to get here? What did to do? It was all based off of walking. And I pick the comedy club. I find the postcode, mm-hmm. and I cut and paste that, and I draw a line out, and then I live within an hour's walk of of the usually the two to three comedy clubs that I kind of work out of okay. in my hometown. So I enjoy the activity of being, having music, listening to my notes or whatever, and spending an hour of time getting to the club to kind of prep before I get into the room. Because once you go in, the green room is just a bit, well, the monkey's always jumping around. Mm-hmm. So you want to be ah, close ah. enough to the club? So you picked uh, Riverside. We could talk about it, right? Yeah, Riverside. Did you like that area? It was different, you know, and I was just looking for a safe place to hide for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I knew I was kind of locked into a, almost a self-imprisonment in the fact that I don't really have a life outside of, like, doing the comedy shit. That's been my life for 25-plus years. So it wasn't like I uh, had any... My community was transient anyway. Mm-hmm. All the comedian, all my stand-up friends were either in and out of countries and stuff, and I... Lost train of thought. What was the question? I'm just saying, what do you think of the neighborhood, uh, Riverside? Oh, uh... so I had, like I said, I hadn't even been in the state of Texas before until I went right from the airport and picked up my keys at the office and moved into my empty apartment with a carry-on and a check bag. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, and uh, I wanted a place that was concrete, mm-hmm. that had... Uh, a security gates. There was a pool and a gym and, and things that were a Starbucks. I found. I was like fucking coffee shop, uh, a taco truck, drugstore, twenty-four hour coffee shop. Okay. Starbucks. This was all within four minutes of my front door. So that's what I like because I didn't want to be in the situation because I was doing most of my traveling on foot. I didn't want to be outside of. A certain distance. I was actually looking at how far it would take me to walk from Texas to Canada. Mm. I was like, how many? It's like a month. Yeah. Yeah. So in case the whole world would... Everything goes, I gotta yeah. go fucking, I don't know, my passport, my teeth, and a handgun. So you can deal with walking a month? With uh, I walked a day. Yeah. I could never do that. My toenails would be off by the third day. It would be fucked. Mm. But doing it, in increments and saying, look, I'm good for probably, I can walk for 10 hours, yeah, sleep for five, walk for 10, sleep for five, and just get into some crazy, like, you know, that runner's high they talk about. Yeah. Because that's what it was. The last, I walked from Hamilton to Toronto. That was like, uh, I want to say 14 and a half hours. And uh, that was brutal. You walked for your spec for your. You had some sort of show or something you wanted to. No, attend? I talked to a couple of my friends. They're both physically competent people. Mm-hmm. She was on the Canadian Olympic women's volleyball team. Yeah, and he was a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a fucking jacked up fireman. Oh yeah, former. Hockey player, just an asshole. Yeah. Boomer. <laughs> boomer. Yeah. The we know boomer. boomer. It's like that ring light, <laughs> exactly. except brown. So yeah. uh, I go, listen, because especially athletes and stuff like that, you can trick them to do stuff with food. Mm-hmm. They're like dogs. They're very simple. So you had a challenge. It was just a physical challenge. Let's just walk from my hometown. I did the Hamilton. math. Because I've been to Toronto. Because leading up to that, I had a little bit of a head start. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I had a poor choice of footwear, but I was in agony for about four hours, pretty badly. Mm. Um, I've been doing running Canyon with a weight vest, and I do that. It would take me an hour and a half to do it, like three times, mm-hmm. and I'm with a good pace and stuff. So I looked at that, I stretched that out. And I'm like, okay, if that's an hour and a half with a weight vest. 
flat ground with no stairs. I think that's doable. And then I checked online that they used to do a run in the winter time in February mm -hmm. where these guys would run like I found the old black and white photos and they'd run all the way out back and I'm like, if these guys were doing it in the 30s, we could walk on a paved sidewalk like a, like a soldier. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, we got Uber. Yeah, I'm with a fireman. The Greyhound. All of it. There's, yeah. we, we, have, we have modern day... There's no one's going to fucking die on this walk. Yeah. Opposed to early settlers. I can't even imagine. Like those... Yeah. Speaking of the no, French... That's something else. Yeah. Those fucking fur trappers in Quebec. Yeah. Do you know about those guys? No, tell me. Tell me. I don't know much. I want to know. But that was a big thing. The Hudson Bay Company. Mm -hmm. And they would deal... Like beaver pelts were uh, huge in Canada. And there was a lot of French, Canadian... Uh, fur trappers. Okay. I don't know where they had come from originally. What? Is, how did they? How did the French end up in Quebec? You must have a, a back end. Oh no! Don't ask me that question. No, huh? <laughs> no, because you don't care. <laughs> you don't care. Uh, how did the French end up in Canada? Well, I'm gonna. Have I to might go don't to, give oh a shit list. God. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I love asking French people about yeah, yeah. their opinions no, on Canadians. You're right. You're right. I should know. Yeah. It's part of your heritage. Mm. Those are your people. Yeah. So going back to, uh, so you, you managed to walk from Hamilton to Toronto yeah. with your two friends. Uh, 900,000 steps. Okay. Just shy of a million. Were you happy? Uh, Did we completed it? Yeah. yeah. Cause I said, look, if we get leave here at 630 in the morning, the last call at the steakhouse mm -hmm. is at 10 PM. So wow. if we only give ourselves, I think I juggled it with about an hour and a half of breaks in collectively. Yeah. But we had to get there before the kitchen closed to order the off the menu, 15 ounce prime rib or whatever it was. And um, but they started window shop and stuff about an hour outside of our destination. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we got to keep moving. So, and then I couldn't eat. I drank a half a pineapple juice and then crawled down the stairs of the restaurant. People were looking at me like I was wasted. <laughs> I had to crawl. I got in the cab. Yeah. He must have thought I had just been hit by a car. <laughs> because honestly, I screamed when I pulled my... I did this. Ah! And I just lay back in the seat. Because yeah. it... it yeah, your 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 the tissue around yeah. all your bones it's up. is just been it's like a shin splint, except it's on your feet on the bottom. Mm. It is couldn't walk for three days. No, I knew this fighter. That actually, uh, we all went to Belgium with my coach Skarboski, and we like Belgium. didn't have many, enough people to fit in the car. I mean, we had too many people to fit in the car. So after his fight. Uh, one of the fighters was sitting in the back seat and they had to have this girl sit on his lap for a four-hour drive after being low kicked for five rounds. When he got what out of the car... What kind of budget <laughs> team is this? But that's how it goes. That's how, that's how the fighters, you know, they just go to, okay, I got to fight in Belgium. I'd love to show a comedian that. Yeah. I've had guys quit on tours because this, there was too many packages in the back seat. Well, imagine getting the, the, your legs chopped oh, yeah, yeah. for five rounds and then having this other person sitting on your lap for the entirety of the ride. I get it. I get it. I've seen hockey players mm -hmm. just gashed out and stitch them up and they're back out there. Faces are all crooked. No. No, I never wanted to be into... Uh, I was had enough stitches and injuries and yeah. shit. I didn't want to really lean into it. So talking about uh, injuries or stitches, uh, what's your first fight ever? With my family doctor when he ripped my foreskin off. Oh, no. Yeah, toenail clippers and a wood burning kit. It was the worst. No. I struggled. Did he? Is that a fight? Do you call that a fight? No, I did pretend no. I was sleeping because I figured I was born a little chubby. I could lose the weight. Mm, okay. But besides that, what's your first fight? What, what? My first fight? Is it in Hamilton? It's always in Hamilton. Everyone's first fight in Hamilton. <laughs> it's like, 
they, uh, a comedian calls it uh, the punch in the face of Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, fuck. First argument, first some, something that really resonated in your life. Something that made a, a difference or made you who you were or are. Most of it's. Is it too illegal? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I saw a lot of it. I stayed out of it mostly. You know, I have, I just rem This is it. Mm -hmm. Just talk about which one you want to talk. It this is kind be. of what was, I got in a fight with a friend of mine at a gas station. Mm -hmm. In Canada, when you used to fill up the gas tanks around the holidays, you get a free hockey stick. So they had these bins with hockey sticks that kind of you free hockey stick. Well, mm -hmm. I forget what how it all kicked off, but I took the hockey stick and I I smashed it over his uh, collarbone and we got into. I think I cracked my nose, and then um, I broke this here. Yeah, but what, what was the cause of this argument? Like, you don't remember? Just oh, wasted. Wasted. Okay. Wasted. How old were you? 63. I was 63. Yeah, uh, that's right. You're a thousand year old vampire. No, uh, uh, teenager? Oh, maybe 20. Because I, I moved to Vancouver when I was 21. So it was shortly before that. Yeah, around that time. And um, I remember them removing the pins from my hand because when I punched them, I'd broken this bone here. And they had these L shaped pins mm -hmm. in my arm in my, to hold these bones together. And uh, when I went, even with Canadian healthcare, what it is, um, they'll try and save a buck. And the tissue around the um, surgical steel, this pin that was exposed, I couldn't understand why they were sticking up. And they were sticking up a lot. So if I just tapped it on a tape, ah! It goes, because it's right in through the bone marrow. And um, I'm trying to keep it clean, and there's this piece of metal sticking out of my hand. Long story short, they um, I go in to get them removed, and um, they put a plier on it and draw oh. it right out. Yeah. I almost fucking puke. And the one back here is has it's all inflamed and infected, mm -hmm. and it's kind of closed up over it. And he's digging into it, trying to get the pliers onto it. So that's the boxer's fracture. That's called the boxer's fracture. Is that what it was? Yes, yeah, right here. Oh, it was bad. So what? Um, I hated it. I yeah, how did it really happen? Like we you got eight screws in here, two plates. Wait, that's the same injury or? No, that's from skateboarding. Okay. But yeah, I got all kinds of metal stitches, all that, eyes. Wait, how did it break your hand, the, the hockey puck? I mean, No, I punched doing? him. You punched him. The stick oh, there broke, you go. There you and go. I, I punched him with the right and uh, broke my... Uh, you know why you broke this? Because no. you probably hit with yeah. the extremity of your fist, and you need to hit with the third knuckle. So if you hit here, it's going to cause your... Zero fracture. technique. Probably on the security camera, it would probably look pretty funny. And you were wasted. So annihilated. What is a guy who's twenty years old and in Hamilton shit faced end up how does he end up in a situation like that? Were you were you performing? Were you No, I was in a car. The guy was in the back seat with me. Oh. We were all, look, for a long time or just It was a very physical seat, city. Very physical. You don't see fights. Every time we went out there was fights. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what Canadians do in what, between snowstorms. Is it hockey, ice hockey that kind of instills that it's free health care? <laughs> it's free health. It's totally free health care. Right. The yeah. same with Britain. You're right. Yeah, and France too. Like, yeah. It, yeah, free health care. Anybody this, that's got health like care, everyone you can count wants on. to fight. Everybody will fight. The the gyms are packed everywhere. Yeah. You know, I'm just surprised. Because you got to learn something. In Austin, there's so few people. Well, no, it's getting there, but I mean, compared to Paris, I mean, obviously it's not the same size, but there's so many fight gyms everywhere. Um, Austin's pretty small. It's, it's boxer pretty small. size here. Mm. You know what? Yeah, they're just doing boxing it for fitness. The, yeah, yeah, it's boxing fitness. There's a there's a few uh, golden gems, but yeah, say golden gems. It's funny though. They don't. There's nobody with like. There's some serious MMA fighters in Austin for sure. I but, believe it. But yeah, it's it's an oddity compared to in terms of strikers. Yeah, because you there's a lot of jujitsu here. What's the academics here at the university? What's the highest? It's football. 
it's sports related. Yeah. Not combat sports. Mm. It's either team sports or... because there's no no parent is rooting for their kid to be in a cage Mm-mm. to fight for their life. No. But getting brain damage from being a quarterback is way more noble. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, American football is more dangerous for CT than boxing. And then Muay Thai goes down the road. For sure. It's like way far down the road. If you ever seen a football player, it is wild to see yeah. how big a human being can be. And now you're going to put that in a freight train situation. Well, it's, just, it's part of the, the, the American tradition. I just feel all the tendons tearing in my leg when that fat bastard collapses on you and breaks oh, you. Yeah. You know, this body weight, mm-hmm. just getting by. Ah, ah, yeah. Separated shoulders. Not even from this, just from some guy stumbling back. That's, yeah. And you got a 400-pound guy. Yeah. It just flattens you out, breaks your leg. I don't know. Physically, I don't know. You I don't follow sports. The, it's just two bodies going full speed into each other. And uh, there's no fight. That's the thing. Usually yeah. with that kind of velocity, yeah. there should be some sort of like somebody stands up, shakes their head, and then they take off their helmets and the other guy stabs the other guy. That's hockey. Yeah, with an ice skate. <laughs> that's hockey. So, ice hockey in Hamilton. I'm sure that you know, that's what happened. I remember that guy got his throat cut with a juggler. Oh, ice with the... Uh, oh, shit. Was that a Canadian? I don't even watch hockey. And uh, I distinctly remember seeing that in the news. He couldn't Mm -hmm. get his hand up quick enough. He lived. He He lived. lived. Yeah. Yeah. Ice skate on the neck. Ah! They had to do that to press the... Yeah, the... He it opened him up. It was purple. wide. It was wide. They show him at the press conference with this this fucking pocket pussy on his neck. Mm. Ah. So you so Hamilton was violent. Still is. Still is. Oh yeah, it's terrifying. Place. Why is it so violent? Is it a specific city that's that violent, or is it throughout Canada outside of the main cities? Is it like, are, you t- are we talking about small cities that are more violent? What is it? I think it's the the fact that it is a country that does have free health care. Okay, there's that. Drinking. Drinking. Uh, it has... then the, Terrible winners. Well, now you've got no? people that are alcoholics and drinkers, and now they're on pharmaceutical drugs, mm. hard drug habits. So now you've got unemployed drug addicts that are hard workers at being unemployed drug addict alcoholics. So that makes for a lot of volatile situations. You see a lot of pretty, just downtown, you just have to, I get bored sometimes. I'll take the bus from one end of the city to the other, and it never lets me down. It okay. is wild. I saw some of your videos over there. Yeah, it uh, is wild. So is that what made you want to leave that town? or? Yeah, there was no, uh, the education level that I had when I left my academic career wasn't even up to standard enough to push a broom at the local factory. So I spent a... So you dropped out of what? Middle school? High school? No, no. They kicked me out of high school. Okay. The principal had called me in on year four and sat me down and explained that I'd been there as long as I have. And then he'd asked me how many credits you need to graduate. And he said, do you know how many do you have? And I said, no. He goes, not even half. And because I've been fucking around for two, three years. Were you making people laugh? How, what was your... Started to find my voice. Uh-huh. I found a group of like-minded kids, probably all broken homes with the exception, I think, one of them. And um, the uh, we weren't in the... Because there was people that were, I don't know, criminally insane with various d- disabilities. Some of the kids were being brought to school. It was all boys school. So, mm. and then uh, we were kind of like a small group of outcasts. We weren't really in with these psychotic killers or the disabled kids. So we kind of formed a, a little bit of a, a click and let each other know where all the pitfalls of the day were going to be. And then, then we started to develop a terrorist tactics. 
everything from vandalism to uh, uh, verbally harassing the teachers to where they'd get physical with us, attack us. Mm. So kind of like punks, right? Is it the punk movement? Or how would you uh, describe that? You know, we were known as, and now you've probably never heard this term before, mm. is a skid. Do you know what a skid? You know, skid you never row. Heard? It's in that context for sure. Like yeah. a skid. Mm-hmm. Like low income housed project, you know, ghetto kid type mm-hmm. stuff. Skid. So... <clears throat> um, you came from a low income family or well I was raised by my mother in the projects in okay. uh just on the outside of the city and uh that was you know there was all these single mothers with young single mothers and then immigrant families from all over any wars that were going on in the late seventies you'd see the remnants of that because they'd come over and they put them in this government housing and stuff, and that was their Thing. So it was just kind of different. You'd smell different things, variety of, because people were cooking differently. And it was stuff. multicultural. Yeah, to a certain degree, but it was all based people from fleeing. Yeah. Apocalypse. So traumatized, multicultural. With local traumatized, just pure trauma. With local trauma. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. It was like a cocktail, monotuff, way new. Yeah. And no male role models in place. No male, okay. Yeah, not really. Not really. If you were lucky, because most of the kids that had dads in those uh, situations were probably living nightmares for the most part. Yeah, so it's probably worse. Yeah, probably worse. Get the shit beat out of them. My mother worked where a lot of the other mothers didn't work. My mother worked in a shoe factory. Mm -hmm. They uh, were a lot of them because of the system. So the more kids you had, the more money you got from the government. Mm. So a lot of these slobs were being pregnated from lazy behavior so that they could have another check cut. So you get some guy who come over from Syria and now all these fat white chicks want to fuck him. He's like, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Pretty happy. He was pretty happy. Huh? Uh, probably. Yeah. Like, anybody, you know, and a lot of these guys were like, fuck, man, like, the all their families are dead or yeah. whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And the government gives you a house and some food and a job that's... Is it still like this right now? Or is it... Yeah. Have they cut down a... Oh, no, a no. Canada has the largest open borders in the world. We take more immigrants, I think, than anywhere else in, in the world. Haven't they tightened a little? I think. I've I think they, they've looked at where some of the immigration, where they're using that to draw money out of the country mm-hmm. by purchasing large portions of real estate and buying up the city more or less. So I think they've curved some of that because they were just buying these properties so their kids could live on them in 10 years. Okay. So low income, you get out of Hamilton. Yeah, I moved to Vancouver, 93. It was the best thing. One way ticket, get there. I'd never stayed in a hostel before. I never seen heroin addicts before. Um, I Not even in the project you grew up in. No, it was like crack. Okay, <laughs> from crack, crack to heroin. Okay. Yeah, from I never <laughs> seen heroin. like there was intravenous drugs, but it was mainly steroid use. A lot of the guys that were selling coke were also using steroids. Okay, so those things went in. It was more of a, a, a physicality thing opposed to somebody that was had any interest in heroin. There, mm. It was, just wasn't around. There were people using it, but i never seen it. I'd seen a little bit of movies. I knew what it looked like and uh, how it was intravenous drugs were taken, but I was always, fortunately, uh, and even that move to Vancouver, if there was anything that made me think about potentially trying heroin, uh, was downtown Vancouver was in the early 90s, it made lost downtown LA look like a spa. Okay. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, and it's still pretty bad. Fentanyl has, unfortunately, killed off most of the homeless people. So it went from, like, say, this many blocks uh-huh. down to the, probably just about third. What, in the 2000s or since COVID? From, or? from like, to, yeah, just in the 2000s. That's when it 
shrunk because of overdoses. People, uh, it was crack, uh-huh. and then prescription drugs, and then cocaine, and then they tried to get the prescription drugs in front of it, so they dropped fentanyl down and on it, and now fentanyl is run right through all of it. And everybody, that's the street sweeper, and everybody just dies. So your impression seeing all these heroin addicts, were you, you thought it was radically different? It's, did it scare you a second compared to crack users in Hamilton? There was a lot of functioning crack addicts in Hamilton. Yeah. You know, where I think heroin would take you into, people, people would nod. Mm. And um, immediately people know if you're nodding, you're on heroin. You know, where crack people apologetic, uh, 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 independable, erratic. Mayors. Mayor, mayors. There's a mayor who's a crack addict mayor, in Canada, right? Yeah. Uh, Ford. Again, I don't know anything about Yeah, So you can you remain he's functional. Dead. He's dead. Is he? Yeah. He's dead. His brother's taken over doing so something. That made you not want to even try uh, no, apparently. and just in a short time, there was people I'd seen that moved from other provinces in pursuit of better lives mm. that uh, for the first time in their lives, you know, they were kind of avid drug users in their small towns, but when they got to Vancouver, and uh, it all ran together, the alcoholics and the heroin addicts, they were all in the bar area and stuff, so... It wouldn't take long for somebody to be susceptible mm. to, to experimenting with it. Yeah. Friends of mine had started off, who completely just snorted it the whole time. But what they were do you addicts. think led them to, to jump the boat? Do you think it's uh, them having dreams of making it in that city? And then they're like, fuck, I'm, I'm just... I think life is hard and heroin's great, I guess. I don't know. You didn't really think too much about it. So you were focusing on becoming a comedian in Vancouver or... It was one of the two, you know, a friend of mine, he wanted to pursue acting and um, I was uh, very much curious about the art form of stand-up comedy, but I was like, fuck, I don't think I can wear a suit. (laughs) So I was like, well, what will be a job that I could dress and be how I want to be and pursue those type of things? And it was either music or comedy and when I spent those early 90s in Vancouver, I hung out. I went to a lot of shows just to kind of meet people my own age and stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the bands that I was going to see, I was kind of watching on how the mechanics of what it would take to make this thing float and what kind of talents you would need and what goes on behind the scenes opposed to just on stage. Learned a little bit about show business by hanging out with punk rock bands in Vancouver. So seeing the behind the scenes allows you to understand what the entirety of the profession is about? Yeah, all the, all the hard part, all the performances, are the, that's the fun part. Mm. I wanted to see what leads up to it. You can't just walk into a room and turn on a mic and expect everything to come up roses. Um, and I didn't want to, uh, after reviewing that for, and kind of procrastinating for a couple of years while I reinvented myself in Vancouver, I realized that I'm really going to have to scale this whole idea of myself back to just me. There's going to be no team. There's going to be no safety net. There's going to be nothing. I'm going to create a a very thin pedestal that I can kind of step up to and just kind of build around that slowly and incrementally kind of develop a career from that. And relying on band members to show up for practices Mm. and all that stuff. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to see. I saw how some of these guys were fighting, and I, I, you can just leave the band. I'm like, I couldn't believe, it. like, in my head, I'm like, I thought this was like a ride or die type of thing where you guys were just going to grind it together for ten years, and see what would come about. But some people would find relationships or decide that they don't want to have five roommates and eat ramen noodles. So taking the route on your own, you knew it was going to be a long route that you might have to suffer for quite some time? Totally. And yeah. for all the, the whole time you have to suffer, the suffering never ends. Suffering okay. the, it's the fun part. Is that the illusion where people say, 
oh, when I make it, everything's going to be okay. I never wanted to make it. Making it for me was not having a boss. Okay. That was it. You weren't in it. I had all these great things. I've had these huge, huge people with, uh, you know, that have been in the business for a long time do and say some really nice things about me. And that's great. But uh, the bottom line is, is that I don't want to uh, work for anybody other than myself. I want ultimate freedom. Mm-hmm. That's why I've never been married or had children. I never even got a driver's license. And if you look back, do you think that you made the right decision? Oh, 100%. I try and make right decisions every day so that in, there's no, everything is all up front. There's no regrets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, With- I'm so grateful, especially over COVID. Even with the absence of audiences, um, I was still very pleased with uh, with all of it. So, so you've been in Austin for what two years now? Two years, I say, this is very like two years, four months. Yeah, <laughs> I came here in the middle of December, like I said, with that carry on and a, and a bag, and uh, I uh, been living here ever since, and um, I really, really. Uh, I like it a lot. It's cool. It's a great city. So your current fight, what is your current fight? What what are you fighting right now? And what are you fighting? Two things that I have, and I'm not going to mention them, but I have two things that I've been wrestling with for for years. And uh, I need to finish these two things. One of them is very, very important, which I'm confident, but... I've also been procrastinating for uh, about four years. This thing is like 99.9% done. And for whatever reason, I'm like paralyzed. I don't know. My friend Russell says I'm afraid of success or I don't deserve it or something like that. But I have this little gem that I'm about to unload Mm -hmm. on society. Is, um, is it taking you back to the first time you had that gem? You see what I mean? Like, uh, oh, shit. Now this is something completely new. This is something big. No, I wouldn't say big. It's just my, it's like my baby uh-huh. that I've been holding and it's, it's stillborn now and I need to put it in the river and, and let it go. Okay. Yeah. So, so letting your baby grow on his own, that's uh Oh, that it's dead. You. It's, <laughs> it's stillborn. It's blue okay. and eyeballs hanging out. But I, it's my... It's like I create all these gross little monsters and then uh, I'm, I'm making them and put them out and then I end up just like holding on to all the awful things. Okay, so you got this. That's your current fight. You're uh, about to come out with something big or something. Yeah. You said the thing. So thing and then I had some ideas for some a couple of different stuff, but uh, a big uh, piece has opened up. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm anxious to do, I think, some more film work, maybe by the end of the year. I got an idea for a a vampire film that I want to do, and I think I can pull it off. Um, But again, uh, I'm not doing that to make it. Um, I'm doing it because I want to do cool shit with with fun people. So it's basically having fun. Yeah, one of them. That's what life is about. Right? Yeah. It's hard. But Having I, fun and leaving a legacy in some way? A legacy. I don't know. It's a big word. I've left a legacy in a urinal once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I did take a shit in a urinal. What about the, the future fight? Besides <laughs> the... Oh, uh, bonjour. 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 Learning how to speak French. Uh, uh, no, but I do, I do got to... Get into another language, but French, unfortunately, no. It's too hard. It's not too hard. I, I, I got a bit of an ear for it. When you're around it, I, I pick up a little bit. I couldn't mm. speak it, but I can remember from school, because the last year in high school that I was in was the year that they uh, that was mandatory. You needed a French credit to graduate. Mm-hmm. I think that was nationally. Um, but uh, no. But again... The only place you can speak it is Quebec, because you know if you show up in France, it's not they're not having it. The Fr- the Canadian yeah. accent, the Canadian French. Yeah, I mean George Saint Pierre uh, showed up at the UFC in Paris, 
I mean, he was hailed as a as a living god because he's French Canadian. Yeah, and he's. That's the only time the French will go. He's one of ours. The guy's a gold medal <laughs> yeah. athlete. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. The guy juggling in old Montreal. No one gives a fuck no, about yeah. that guy. But isn't it universal? No one gives a fuck about the the little guy <laughs> juggling on the sidewalk. You know. But that guy's been around for fucking two hundred years. Yeah. The court jester. Doo, 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 doo. He shoves an orange up his ass and then does a cartwheel. He goes, "Your orange juice, sir." Mm. Well. uh... Any shows coming up? Anything? Big show coming up. Yeah. I hope so. I've had to fucking fire some people and move some shit around, but as far as Austin, Texas goes, and the time this comes out, uh, more relevant would be the July 1st, the Canada Day show at the Sunset Strip Comedy Club here in Austin, Texas on July 1st, 11 p.m. will be an all-Canadian lineup. Uh, two names I can say. James Cunningham, mm -hmm. who uh, was a, a host of a television show called Eat Street, where he would go and eat at food trucks, and that was his fucking job. And he'd eat food and go, that's great, and then go to another food truck. And then uh, infamous, uh, legendary uh, comedy genius, Kenny Hotz from Kenny vs. Spenny, and also Dean McDermott uh, from... Uh, the Spellings, Tori Spellings husband from 90210 is also a Canadian guy. Uh, he's going to be on the show. Myself and a uh, half a dozen miscellaneous comedians. So, But go to jasonrouse.com and you can find out all my shit there. But that's about it. And then I got a bunch of sh shit in Canada, but come to the Austin shows. They'll be fun. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We'll be back. Right? Bonjour. Bonjour. Bon bonne journée. Bonne bon journée. Bonne journée. Bonne journée. Bon let's go get some cigarettes. All right, let's do that. Bonjour. Sounds good. Ciao.